Who we got here? Hi. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll kind of walk around do an evaluation. I might have to have you move because my girlfriend is going to pick up some things for her and her mom's trip and they'll be back probably soon. <laughs> and um, but we'll we can unload their stuff and everything first so that way we don't have to carry everything so far. Yeah, let's go ahead and let them meet first and then we'll, and then I'll unload. Dog smells. <laughs> and he's already gone. <laughs> Hi. Oh, they have blue eyes. He's like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Mom. Oh, that's all. <laughs> Is he usually shy of strangers?
because they make people laugh. So I'm not sure if I um, didn't get that in an email or the or a text. Um, but yeah, whenever you get a chance to write it up, that way I get like his background, um, history, uh, name, age, breed, things that brief history, I sh anything you think I should know about him, and then your training priority list. So I was trying to look back on the on the text and double check my emails, and yeah, I don't think I got anything. Yeah. <laughs> And just because it's been so long, it's just trying to refresh on everything. Um, how'd the muzzle training go? We actually did good. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, had a little, <laughs> I was like inclined to try, and my husband was pretty adamant he didn't want to do that. Oh, okay. Um, and then we talked about it, and we realized that the only time that you know, we really actually worry about him ever just is when he's trying to get kids out. And with kids. Just during. Oh no! Just when we're working with him, so that way oh, we can okay. see what his behavior was like around kids running around without the fear of them. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the reason why I suggested it before, because of the longer build-up time, is because it could take me up to a week or so to get the muzzle trained. And I can't do any work with kids until then because of safety reasons. So, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's okay. Um, hopefully, we won't need it. Uh, the only, like I said. I'd rather have a safety net, especially with children around in the neighborhood. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do that work until he is. That's okay. We'll we'll work on the other things. <laughs> I I do I, but like I said, it's sometimes it takes them a while to get used to having it on. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody kind of build up and also he's, he's, he's already quite nervous with that. Yeah, um, so especially if he's nervous with kids um, and he has something on his face that he's not comfortable with, then that's going to be bad too. Uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out if we're not able to because of the, the time restraints and things like that. We'll just work on the other things. Um, yeah, just because, like I said, in, in my line of work, it's always better to be safe than sorry, yeah. especially when working with dogs and bite cases. Uh, one of my other clients, unfortunately, has a lawsuit right now because before we started yeah. working with their dog, they had gotten out and had bit somebody. So, yeah, yeah, it can be a lot more or less expensive when you try to do it this other way around just because of our own apprehensions you know and we really try to make the muzzle a good positive thing that they enjoy having on you know so that way they don't even mind having it on and actually enjoy having it on so then if they do get in a suddenly uncomfortable situation when they get out and they, they're running around with kids you know even if they try to nip at them or snap at the heels or anything they'll have the muzzle on so they can't hurt them and we'll be able to work on redirecting them with that extra time uh, 
But yeah, that's okay. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Hi. Oh, he's so scared. So here's another good reason why it'd be good to have a muzzle drag trainer, right? Because he is obviously, he's obviously distressed because I'm either talking or getting closer to him. And I need to know how he'll react once pushed in those distress situations to help him through it, right? So like, right now he's doing a really good job of creating space backwards, but to what degree and at what point does he need to be redirected before he snaps back forwards, yeah. you know? So, it's, it's okay. <laughs> It's, it's okay. Like I, I understand people's apprehensions towards them. It's just, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. It should actually be a really positive thing. <laughs> kind of like, uh, like seatbelts, you know? You put it on, you hope you never need it, but it's better to have it on than, and not need it than need it and not have it on. <laughs> um, it's like those unexpected accidents and things like that. And that's what we were actually going to work on. Um, but that's okay. Here, let me go ahead and uh, see the leash. Hi. Oh, yes. Oh, I know. Oh, what is mom? Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, ho, ho. Hi, it's okay. And also, like, when you were talking about the pity that was um, very friendly and you were unable to probably meet them because he was barking so you kept space, right? In our line of work, because we want to work on those behaviors, evaluate and help him actually cope instead of avoiding, we need him when he's barking and uncomfortable to be able to engage and interact. And if he were to snap at the other dog and, and hurt them, you know, um, that would be another reason why it'd be good to have a muzzle on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, or sometimes, you know, you'll see a dog and you can just kind of tell either just from the body language of the dog or from the body language of the owner that that dog is not comfortable. I mean, I'll usually ask you, like, if your dog's friendly, and if sometimes people say no. Um, so if either the, the other dog is in the case and it's not a good idea, or a bagel is kind of a little nervous, I'll, I'll put it from the dog. Just kind of shorten the leash so oh. that he can't get, you know, like, try to keep the distance. Gotcha. Yeah. So we'll be getting him, like, We'll be trying to get him into those uncomfortable situations so we can actually get him used to it, you know, and not reacting. Yeah. So, um, and you'll see in the evaluation video uh, later with the other dogs, I'll have mine on a muzzle, even though they've seen hundreds of dogs. But it's just, you know, like I said, it's just a safety thing for initial meets, tight, close spaces. New dogs might get overwhelmed and snappy, and I want to make sure that my client's dogs don't get hurt. You know, because they, they snap at them. So, you know, my dogs still get hurt. <laughs> but that's, it'll be fine. Um, but then you'll see later on in, in the same video, usually too, that the muzzle will be off and everybody will be hanging out. So it's, it's not a, it shouldn't be a, a negative thing that you always have to have on you. It's, it's a safety net that we have during training to help push him to those limits so that way we can actually get him used to things without reacting. Um, yeah, okay. Well, any, <laughs> anything else we should we should go over? <laughs> Hi. Oh, it's okay, boo boo. And then the sort of, yeah, like the reactivity. His big, like I think his big triggers, I mean, I think right now he's just, he's just nervous. He knows mm -hmm. that. He's just not sure. He knows something. So he doesn't really get like this too often. But the big things are like his big triggers, um, children, and wheels. Okay. He didn't like skateboards, bikes, uh, obviously balls, but that's more because he just really likes balls. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, we'll do some trail work with him. And then, and then like at home, it's just like people come over. I don't want him jumping on guests, and I don't really want him like barking, especially. Um, so like, you know, it would be nice if we could kind of be like, he doesn't have like a spot in the house. Hey, we it's okay. Him. We've tried to get him. He never likes crates and he doesn't really push it. Hey, hey. Aww. Come on, bud. It's okay. There you go. Um, he has a. Okay. Um, so, like, we don't have a place where he can be, like, go to, you know, if someone comes over. Uh -huh. Oh, and he doesn't really have good recall. Gotcha. 
So, <laughs> so that combined with so him getting out, issue, and like, yeah. Yeah, I better recall. That's the other thing would be less of an issue. Right. But okay. if he's in the Yeah, it's usually a bad idea to try to chase the dog anyways well, if yeah, they're running. Kind of so <laughs> so Good out. job. Well, See, it's okay. Like, Come on. He goes off leash in the woods, but he doesn't have good recall. He's fine when it's the, he's fine when it's uh, the dog wears Sonia, and it's, really fine. it's just it's a good walk. Packing his stuff okay. to let him calm down, and then I'll have you move the car, and I'll uh, we'll start the evaluation with his boarding mate. Who will he'll be leaving on Saturday, but then he'll get a new one on Saturday as well. And a couple other smaller pups. No, we're not going in. I heard he wants food. All right, so in case I don't forget. All right, so food. Food, and then in here I've got some Bag Charlie stuff. bears, harness, extra leashes. Uh, there's some like dental treats, rawhide shoes. He did, like I said, he doesn't have a bed or anything, and he doesn't usually have a place, but I brought a towel from home because I thought maybe he'd like the smell. Sure, so okay. From home. I'll put it in his crate. And then once a day, not always, but for, sometimes for a special meal, we give him like the fresh pet. Okay. So He'll probably food. need it in the beginning because he might be anxious of a new place so as I well. Two, so two fresh logs of that, and then yeah, he's got the, the rawhide rolls, and then this is his favorite tea toy. Let's leave that one at home then. <laughs> so that way it doesn't get destroyed or mixed up with any of the other toys. Because the other dogs, especially if that's his favorite. Yeah. Just flush toys last about 30 minutes. So please stop by. That's fine. We'll have rope toys and stuff around the kind of bowl and share. Okay. I'll let you keep the water and food bowl as well, unless he won't eat or drink out of under one. Okay. All right. And why don't we actually, while we have this, why don't we go ahead and, while I'm loading everything up, you can put them on the harness so we can see what his walking behavior is like on that. And I'll go let this in. I'll hold him here. Yeah, and that way I could also record any separation anxiety. And then when you get back, I'll give him back to you and I'll go grab his roommate. You're gonna have a best friend to play with, huh? Whoa, okay, it's okay, hold on. <laughs> it's okay. We'll be back soon. Come, come say hi. There we go. Look at that.
Wei. Wei. So what ends up happening, especially with these kind of harnesses, if he's still pulling through them, sometimes it discourages because it just kind of turns him uncomfortably. But it's also not fitted right. Okay. Usually because you kind of see like when I, oh, I'm kind of, kind of like, oh, 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 oh. Hi, excuse me. Thank you. Okay. So you kind of see here when I move this left and right, oh, yeah. the whole thing shifts. Only this part here should shift and then pull with him. So this whole part here is yes. super loose. Okay. So it's not even like doing what the harness should be doing, which is kind of take his body left and right. You kind of see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's all that effort there and that can cause shaping too. So go ahead and um, tighten that up a little bit, slash a lot. <laughs> so you pretty much like I said, when he pulls left or right or when you pull left or right, only this part here in the center should pull and his whole body should go with you immediately all right you got him i'm gonna go grab the other puppy okay okay <laughs> Have you been following along in the video series on YouTube? Okay, so this is Howie. <laughs> nice. It's okay, big guy. Alright, let's try to go for a little walk together so that way it'll give this one an opportunity to disengage their focus from just him. Hopefully get distracted by the environment and just kind of get comfortable being around him. Okay. Good boy. Oh yeah, he's a good boy. This is Howie. <laughs> We've been working a lot on his social skills, so he's pretty much just about graduated. Good job, big guy. And you see, he still has that kind of initial apprehensiveness and uncertainty as your pup, but just uh, getting them to calm down and relax a little bit, you know, faster and be able to kind of disengage and refocus. Good boy. Good job. <laughs> Go <Don't> chill. <you. laughs> okay. Come on. Good job. <laughs> Perfect.
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you're in trouble now. Oh. <laughs> I'll let him push his buttons for a little bit just to see how he gets. <laughs> Good boy. Yes. Good boy. <laughs> He'll warm up to you in a little bit too. You just have to let him get to know you. So she has the same kind of apprehensiveness as your pet, being that lack of socializing. Yeah. But after they kind of get a chance, unpressured, to get accustomed, then they're fine. <laughs> Good boy. So yeah, just ignore him, let him smell you. Perfect. Good boy, good listen. Very good. Who's that, huh? Who's that? Now you can try to give him a treat, see if that'll help. There you go, good boy. <laughs> yeah. Stranger danger. Good boy. <laughs> there you go. I know, you're trying your best, it's okay. You gotta give him some time. <laughs> Good boy, come on. There you go, good. So I got to finally smell him a little bit. We'll keep walking this way, so hopefully he can backdraft. Good. Shaking off the signs of uh, anxiety there, smelling him a little bit, good. Uh, at least now he's starting to get a little bit more curious and more kind of engaging with trying to smell him and get to know him as well. Feel a little bit more patient with him being around you and mom, so. Yeah, it doesn't take too long. Sometimes that initial apprehensiveness, and you'll see in the video too, instead of um, kind of enabling by being that strong base, which is kind of good when you're both unsure of a situation and he kind of needs a safe space, then what it could do also is to help enable him to feel like the whole situation is safe by more so like engaging him into those things. Like as soon as you left and he was unsure and um, barking and all that stuff, I just went ahead and, you know, showed him that there was nothing to be afraid of with me um, as opposed to just letting him continue being apprehensive by just kind of pushing in and letting him see that nothing bad was happening. And so sometimes socially we'll have to do the same as well. Because it's good that they're coming to you for support. So that's like almost the first part. The second part is you now showing him that the situation is okay by either engaging with the other person or kind of promoting him to actually move away from you. Oh, okay. <laughs> good boy. And so that's another reason why we're just kind of letting him freely kind of move around and engage with Howie. I'm not trying to tuck Howie away from him to give him that space. Um, because since there isn't any threat, I'm not acting like there is any threat. If that makes any sense. Hi. I think he's just 
trying to get him to chase him now. <laughs> Come on, my guy. <laughs> This way. Come on, Allie. Good boy. <laughs> so, see right there? Hmm? And that's when you would be like, no, it's okay, go play. <laughs> I know you want to play. And this is also this is also how you can gauge protectiveness as well. If you need to, you can also let go of his if he starts pulling you too much. So you kind of see his reactivity is based off of kind of and your see how he's only doing it when he's around you because he has that extra sense of, of confidence to react whereas here it's more so showing him that it's okay to not have to react right good boy good job So you kind of see the difference in behavior just from the, the difference in the hand.
Think you're ready to walk both of them? Yeah. And if, like I said, if you need to, you can always let go. They're gonna become quick best friends, or he's gonna end up bugging the heck out of them in a couple of days. Uh, I think it'll be okay. Hopefully, once mom leaves and he gets settled in with his new environment, I feel like he'll probably have one more bout of being overwhelmed. Unfortunately, when he has to get used to the two other new dogs in the new new uh, boarding area. So after we take some time today, just kind of let him settle in like this. You should be fine. Hopefully you never know. Maybe playing by this evening. We all know Howie will keep trying his best to get him to <laughs> to concede. Good job. There you go. Very good. This took a good bit of time. It hasn't been the longest time that I've seen before, but you can see how these interactions can sometimes take extended periods of time too. Um, so that's why it'll be important during his his social sessions, um, especially with little ones. We try to get him hopefully comfortable and used to first, and we'll, we'll be building on discipline and redirecting, um, giving hopefully time that he needs and uh, <laughs> the kids and parents will have that patience too. Very good. There you go. Right. Do you have any questions before I put Howie back in? You both did very well. And do you have any other questions that you want recorded or any other behaviors? Uh, Later this afternoon. Okay. Um, with 
the barking at the guest. Well, we'll see if we can work on that when he's out in public, because it might be one of those spatial things when he's more comfortable at your place or yeah. But we can at least work on the redirecting part and the social part. We can work on place as well because that'll be kind of coincide with the recall. Um, the only thing is that may or may not help because, like, a Howie here is actually a really good example, right? If he's told to place and stay, it's really difficult for him. But if he wants to engage or is unsure, whether he's sure or unsure, he'll want to engage. And so sometimes having them place further away if he's already apprehensive will make him more apprehensive. Or if he's excited, will make him more excited. So it may help. It may not help in that situation. Yeah, because she is. He is excited and it's not like, because I'm not barking out of aggression. He's barking out of aggression. Yeah. You want to engage. So we'll have to more so try to find ways of, <laughs> try to find ways of uh, him learning to control his energy and his, his excitement and then being able to reward for that. Okay. <laughs> like this guy right so as soon as he's not able to engage as you see there it almost amps him up to try more uh, some pups are just that way and that's why when we're working with dogs and we're training them it's important to actually take into their personality what works for them and what doesn't instead of just you know doing <laughs> doing things good boy okay now you can go say hi Good job. Now we can disengage. See what I mean? So getting his attention and focus first, then giving him what he wants, and then getting that attention and focus back. As opposed to just being like, no, leave it, stay. All those things will actually make it harder for him to be successful in what you want him to do, which is generally just to calm down. Good boy. Okay. And I'll definitely record Keep you updated on everything. I know. You can say.
Hi. to play with you. <laughs> we shall break him with kindness. <laughs> Good boy. Oh God. This way, y'all. There you go. <laughs> There you go, get him. <laughs> there you go.
friends in less than a day. We're good to go. Silly puppy. Huh? Are you a silly puppy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. See, you're allowed to smile. You silly. Yeah. Come on. Come here, you. Getting all tangled up. <laughs> Come here, Howie. Let me get your leg. I oh, know. Hold on. Oh. Almost, almost. Oh, okay. All right. Which way does this go? Does this go this way? All right. This way, big guy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, you're not invited to play. Come on.